Hey, hey, Adventure Girls. It's Sinka here, creator of Adventure Girl. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> How's that for a force I have it? Oh, my goodness. Okay, take two. Yeah. Hey, hey, Adventure Girls. It's Sinka here, creator of Why She Adventures. And I have got the lovely Megan Maloney with me today. Um, she's an amazing photographer in New Zealand. And I have the absolute pleasure of having a juicy conversation with her about the outdoors. Welcome along, Megan. Hey, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm super excited. Oh, it's my pleasure. Once uh, after I met you um, through a mutual friend, Rachel, who's uh, also actually been on the series as well, I was like, this lady needs to come and share all her adventure stuff because she has done some uh, pretty phenomenal stuff and she's um, definitely a standout in the photography world, um, especially for females in New Zealand as well. So in doing all that photography, you've been to some amazing places in New Zealand. And um, I know we're going to talk about some really good stuff. So um, how everything, just a little bit about Megan, is that um, after writing a family blog for a few realised, she realised that her happy place, like all of us, is the great outdoors um, and photo doing photography um, with the beauty of New Zealand. Um, she's moved from uh, Wellington to Cambridge in 2015 and started exploring around the beautiful Waikato Bay of Plenty and the Coromandel and discovering all those beautiful hidden gems that are worth visiting. And like us, she is a sucker for a great sunrise and sunset and spending the days hiking, chasing waterfalls and beautiful reflections. So thanks, Megan, for coming along and catching up with us today. Yay. So cool. I can't wait. <laughs> so um, you now live in a really beautiful, well, I mean, let's face it, any part of New Zealand is a be mm -hmm, beautiful mm -hmm. part of New Zealand. And I think that's when we chatted, as we just kind of really talked a lot about um, how passionate we both are about getting Kiwis out to experience our backyard. And given our current situation um, and the lack of ability to travel uh, right now, um, when we are able to finally get back out and stuff like that, I think it's just... New Zealand is the, is the place to visit. I would happily spend my money all day, every day, visiting New Zealand um, and traveling I around agree. and checking it all, all <laughs> out. So I was like, I know we're going to talk heaps about this um, in here. So um, what got you into, so you mentioned you know, in the intro there that you were doing some blogging and, and, um, and then you kind of connected into the outdoors. How did that all come about for you? Yeah, so when I was living in Wellington, I, I was sort of, I was desperately wanting to move back to the Waikato and I was having a, a real difficulty convincing my husband that we needed to do the move. Uh, I pretty much kind of had to give up and just let him kind of get to that realisation by himself. So in the meantime, I was like, well, I need a new hobby because, you know, I can't move. So what am I going to do? So I just picked up, I bought a full frame camera and started taking a few, um, going out and doing sort of sunrise and sunset along some of the Wellington sort of bays and mm. just really just connected with being outdoors on my own at that time of the morning. It's a really mm. sacred kind of time and yeah, just loved it so much. And so I kind of started down that track of, of sort of trying to improve my landscape photography skills. And then when we moved um, to Cambridge, I just kind of all fell away for about six months. We were trying to obviously get to know a new community, schools, work. We, um, we built a house as well. And so for six months, everything just kind of went on hold. And it wasn't until we did a family holiday to the Coromandel, which was kind of the first time we'd really ever explored there. And we went to Cathedral. My husband and I did a mish to Cathedral Cove one morning. I think we got up at like 3 a.m. and drove and walked. And, and I just, that was kind of the beginning of getting back into it for me. And also because I'd gone from like this place where there was these beautiful seascapes to being landlocked, I was like, well, where on earth do you even take photos in the Waikato? Like, <laughs> I was just so used to taking shots around moving water that I was just like, well, I'm an hour's drive from either direction. So yeah. what, what do you... But once I started getting out and, and kind of just exploring a few places and doing little trips, because I think one of the beauties of the Waikato is it's actually so close to so many places. So you yes. can do a mission to, to Rotorua, to Tauranga, to um, Waihi, to Raglan within like a day trip. So, you know, suddenly all these places became really accessible. And then the more I explored, the more I found different places as well. Um, and yeah, just kind of grew from there, really. Amazing. So you have now do all the landscape photography of those places that you were talking about there what are the places that um kind of capture your attention the most where are the places that you constantly get drawn back to to go and 
well, photograph, but also mm. to go and spend time in nature and things like that. Mm. Well, around here, I'm a huge sucker for waterfalls. Um, I don't know if it's just the, I don't know, they're just super relaxing. I could spend hours just listening to the sound of rushing water. And I think it does our spirits good somehow to be amongst yes. that kind of environment. And um, there's like, t I think I worked out there's something like 10 waterfalls within an hour's drive of where I live. So I am pretty spoiled for choice. Um, and yeah, I just, yeah, it's only probably been in the last couple of years that I've really kind of developed this massive passion for waterfalls. And I've written heaps of blogs on, you know, waterfalls in each region around New Zealand, the ones that are worth visiting and, and you know, how to do good compositions there and stuff. But um, yeah, though, waterfalls are definitely a place that I could just visit over and over and over because every time you go, you get different light, different conditions, different seasons. Mm. And even though you'd say, well, a waterfall is a waterfall, you know, it's water flowing and it's in a bush, but the lighting can be different at the time of year can be different. It can make quite a big difference to sort of the, you know, your overall experience. Um, in terms of other spots, I, I'm a, I am a bit of a sucker for Cathedral Cove. I know it's quite touristy now, but if you go, <laughs> it, if you go for sunrise, then you do get a pretty different experience than going middle of the day during the summer. Um, yeah. I've been there when I've been like, there's only been three or four people on, on the beach and it's quite a big wow. area down there too because there's actually two coves with the cave in the middle there's actually you know it's not like you're standing on a tiny little platform with 50 other people you really can go grab your own spot and kind of just forget if there is anybody else around you and just yeah seeing the sunrise from there I think it's pretty special because the, the the offshore islands that they have plus the unique kind of cave formation and stuff it's just it's, there's nowhere else like it in New Zealand so I, I do love going there it's not somewhere I can really get to on a for a sunrise in the morning, I have to actually be staying in the Coromandel. Mm. But yeah, yeah, done plenty of plenty of early morning missions there to kind of walk in the dark and um, it can be a little bit eerie actually walking in the dark with all the noises of the the night. <laughs> yeah. So what does it take then to get up and capture a sunrise photo? Because you know, like we see so many amazing sunrises and mm. all of that, but it's you know, there's probably a bit of planning and all of that sort of mm. stuff especially if you're going somewhere that's maybe a little bit more remote. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not just, a, I'll just jump in the car and go and, you know, pop a camera up. Like you yeah. must have learned a whole lot of things along the way that now make it better and easier for you to capture all those beautiful photos that you do. Yeah, totally. I mean, the doc website is awesome for giving mm. you um, advice on like how long it's going to take to get there. Although I must say, I find it pretty hit and miss in terms of the duration. Um, yeah. Some, yeah, someone told me that apparently each ranger gets to choose um, like that. It's the, it's their best estimate, you know, because they've oh. it. Yeah, so that's really? why. Like, for, yeah, for example, at Cathedral Cove, if you have to walk from Hahe Beach, it tells you that it's an hour and 15 minutes, and I do it in about 35, so, you know. <laughs> but then I'm usually on a mission because I want to get there too, well, yeah. you know, to get the right light. But then other times, you know, you do the dock, the dock you know, you, you do a walk and you go, well, I feel like I'm quite slow because you're only just making it in the times that they kind of tell you for those hikes. So, yeah, yeah it can be a bit hit and miss. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm often, um, I'll be planning, I'll be looking at the weather apps and looking at the cloud cover. And, I mean, albeit sometimes you're going to be in a place anyway, so you just have to suck it up and take whatever conditions actually you actually get. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but if you've got a choice of somewhere to go, um, you know, if you're staying somewhere and you can kind of go in either direction, then I will often look at the weather apps. Um, tide apps too can be really helpful because there's some places you can only access at low tide. Well, and Cathedral Cove is one of those because you can't actually yeah. get through the cave at high tide. Um, I have never been to Cathedral Cove. Wow. Ever. <laughs> Now. I feel like I have not ticked off a quintessential mm. Mm. New Zealand must do adventure by not doing that. I feel yeah. like I'm one of, like I feel like I'm like the only person in New Zealand who hasn't done it. <laughs> no, you're definitely not the only person in New Zealand who hasn't done it. I just I just happen to have done it a lot because I've spent a lot of time on family holidays in the Coromandel and it's just yeah. one of those places that I, I know I can get to and I mean, I've had I've had mornings where I've come away going, oh, I didn't really get what I wanted, but I never, I've never come away from uh, you know that walk in and out and spending time there feeling like it was a waste because it's just yeah. such a beautiful place to be, regardless of whether I get you know a banger, as, as we like to call them, a banger <laughs> shot. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. We didn't want to confuse mm. banger with something else. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's amazing um so 
how did you how did you grow your business then? So like you said, you know, you picked up a camera, you started taking photos. Mm. Then it's like, how did you or how did it all come about going, oh, I want to, I love taking photos to, hey, this could be a great business. I could get mm. paid to either take photos or teach people to take photos. Like how did that all come mm. about? It's definitely been a bit of a, a slow burn, I would say. Um, yeah. I think just posting. Like any great business, it's uh-huh, a journey. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. It's not a, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Yes. Um, yeah, so I think I just... I just started posting on social media and being really consistent with posting. Like I don't as much now, but I used to post almost daily on Instagram and, Mm. you know, hashtag, you know, um, tags that would potentially get you refeatured and reposted and things. And so it definitely like, you know, grew over time. I mean, I think when I jumped back into the landscape photography, I had maybe a thousand followers on Instagram and I've just gradually grown that over the years. I mean, you can't really grow very well on Instagram now with the algorithm, but um, you know, you kind of get to a point where you've got a certain following and that kind of enables you to have a, a group of kind of dedicated people who are seeing your stuff all the time and are mm. engaging with you. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess I had a few, I had, have definitely had a few um, extra opportunities come about. Like I was able to go on a, um, uh, Waik- uh, Waikato Tourism hosted event which took us to the caves and Hairy Feet which is a Hobbit location and then we did a sunrise at Hobbiton which was pretty cool um, yeah. to, to be able to sort of be inside Bilbo um, Bilbo Bag Ends um, little Hobbit hole looking out at this amazing sunrise was pretty wow. pretty spectacular and that was on um, International Hobbit Day and as a result of that um, down about six months down the track um, a few really big hubs on Instagram picked up the, the image that I posted and I went from like, I think it's 18,000 to 23,000 followers in the space of a month because it kept getting shared. Wow. Accounts. And then Royal Caribbean sent me an email and said, oh, we've, you know, we've, we've, we've noticed you on social media and we're, um, we're going to be launching the world's largest, um, newest cruise ship symphony out of, of the seas out of Barcelona. How do, how do you feel about you and your whole family coming and spending a week on board um, you know, doing some social media for us and experiencing the cruise ship. And I was like, yeah, nah, I think I'll go off and walk the route, boom, because that's what I had planned. <laughs> <laughs> totally did not say that, but, you know. Uh, so, yeah, so that was a pretty cool, and that was something else that was just one of those, like, you know, would never have come about was it not, were it not for photography. Yeah. I will say, though, that spending time overseas, particularly on that trip for a week around the Mediterranean and going to Rome and, I had been before, but many years before, and, and going to all these, what people would call like bucket list kind of locations to visit, I just came home and went, oh my God, I'm so lucky to live in New Zealand, and I don't really feel the need to go overseas anytime soon, because, you know, um, we just have, we just don't know how lucky we are with the places we can visit, and the lack of people, and yeah, that really solidified it for me, and I'm not knocking the trip, because it was amazing, but yeah, yeah, take me to take me back to that any time. Oh. You know, people complain about, you know, twenty or thirty people at the Wanaka Tree, and that is nothing. Although now that the Wanaka Tree's lost its branch, maybe it won't be quite so popular. Oh, what? But How do I not know that? this? No, some some turd. I can't. I probably can't, I can't oh, see. Oh no! Oh my gosh, this is a look of devastation. Yes, somebody broke it off. Mm-hmm. Oh. They went and sorted it off. Sort it off. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry for everyone who's watching this. this is obviously <laughs> just big news for me. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of photography people up in arms on social media a couple of weeks oh, ago. It kind of happened around the time we went into lockdown. So I think it was probably got a bit, you know, there was this and this happening, but um wow. but yeah, so that, that was sort of um, I don't know how I don't know that information. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to go Google it after this. I am yeah, going to, I'm gonna have a little cry. I know it's because it's such it just, a beautiful it's, little spot. It is, and it's ruined that that bottom, that beautiful curve on the bottom of the tree yeah. that kind of just makes it really balanced. Anywho, that aside. But yeah, so just for me, it was just a real kind of like gradually just a few opportunities came up that I just kept yeah. saying yes, kept saying yes to, and then um yeah, and I kind of got to the beginning of last year and I hadn't even actually run any workshops or anything by that point, but I yeah. kind of wanted to, to dip my toes in like a few weekends. So and up until then, it was la- like landscape photography, doing that, um, capturing those for businesses and uh, organisations and tourism boards and that sort of thing. 
Yeah, I mean, not often. Um, yeah, a few little sort of weekends away, like I did some work for Rotorua NZ, and as I said, I've done I've done a few um, kind of like little events with the Waikato. So here, I mean, it's easy to do it from here because I'm based here, not not yeah. so much sort of further afield, but. Um, yeah, and then I just kind of was like, you know what, I actually love, I love being out in New Zealand. I love people showing people new places. Um, why not help them improve their photography whilst they're at it? And so that was kind of how the, the weekend workshops came about. And once I'd sort of done a few of those, I was like, yeah, I really want to do this a bit more. And that's sort of how the um, opportunity to work with Sony came about because um, I'd applied the year before and hadn't even heard back from them. But I think because I'd already done some workshops, they could see you know, I had, I guess mm. I had a track record and people had said, yeah, they were awesome and that. So, um, yeah, towards the end of last year, um, just started having some conversations with him about becoming an advocate. And so now obviously I can host my workshops with Sony's backing and get cameras and lenses for people to try on the workshops and just, yeah, having a brand like that behind you is, yeah, it's pretty cool. So a huge congratulations on that because I saw your post <laughs> recently about uh, the announcement with um, all of that. So do you want, for anyone who's watching this you want to fill them in a bit more on that because it's mm. uh you're one of one of five mm, no six yeah one of six, six. Of course mm. <laughs> one of six the only woman mm. and the only woman and the only kiwi so congratulations that's thank you unbelievable that's a yeah obviously kudos to the skill you have for um photography and um and the art that you do so do you want to fill the mm. everyone in a bit in and up in a bit more on that yeah <laughs> I put my yeah. Together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so around the time that I became an advocate, um, I think the fact that I was sort of top of mind, I guess, with them in terms of the communications we've been having, um, I got approached by um, the team in Australia and just said, look, we, we've got a new ad campaign. We really want to promote our full frame cameras and flagship lens sort of um, range. And because I was already shooting with that gear, uh, I guess it made me a natural kind of natural choice but obviously I still had to come up with the goods and get an image that was a hero that they could use for the campaign because they were obviously targeting different kind of genres as well mm -hmm. um, and you had and a few adventures to get those I didn't did you? have a few adventures <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to hear about them because they yeah. look like I did a yeah. read through on them and I was like yeah. let's talk about those because they sound yeah. really fun <laughs> yeah so um it was interesting so this because is a I, real behind the scenes for everyone now like you know they go oh yeah yeah this is how it really is for someone who goes out into places into nature and does photography this is like the cool back adventure cool. stuff behind it yeah mm -hmm. so i'm excited to talk about this so so did you have to get a couple of photos one hero I photo had one hero photo that i had to get now i'd actually submitted some before christmas thinking that um, they were from Fodoriki Beach, which is on the west coast up near Nelson, and it's an it's probably one of New Zealand's most uh, amazing beaches. Had sort of variable weather, and I was I sort of submitted these images thinking one of those will get selected, no trouble. And then I got some feedback in the in early January from the guys, and they're like, "No, oh, we like them, but not really quite, you know, grabbing us." But we really <laughs> love these ones because I'd submitted a whole bunch of other images to go with mm -hmm. a, a microsite um, locational kind of thing. And the ones that they loved were Cathedral Cove, Mount Taranaki and Milford. And I was like, and I, and I had a deadline of the end of January and this was like <laughs> a week into January. And I was like, okay, I uh, can't really get to Milford very easily. <laughs> other end of the country. Probably yeah. can probably do a mission to Cathedral Cove and Taranaki to try and get something that's kind of just going to really wow them. And, and, and the reason being is because I'd only actually had my new camera for a couple of months, that, that hero image had to be shot on that gear. Got it. So I, yeah. I only had a really limited, um, I guess, library of images that were suitable. So I had to go shoot it, shoot new content. So decided I'd go off to do Cathedral Cove. And I was just like, I'm going to give myself the best chance possible and stay two nights. So I drove up on the, in the evening, stayed at the um, motor camp, slept. I've got a full territory. So I had this really nice sleep, uh, camping mat. So I just pitched the, pitched the mat in the back of the territory. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, got up at 4 a.m. And, and um, in, in summer at Cathedral Cove, you can't actually walk from the top car park. You have to walk from the beach, which adds another like 15 or so minutes. And it's up through, it's up through Spiderville in the bush, you know, like you're the first one going through yes. the bush in the morning. <laughs> 
spider webs are hitting you in the face. And I was just like, I learned after the first morning, I was like, right, I'm going to wear a cap. So at least my cap hits the spider webs, not my face. Um, there you go. There's tip number yeah, one. Tip number one. Yeah, wear a cap. Um, yeah, so I did the mission to the beach and um, at sunrise and then came back. And then I kind of just, because I am, I've got a, a workshop planned in the Coromandel, I spent a lot of the day just scouting out some locations to mm. visit. Um, and then went back, did the walk again for sunset. Um, funnily enough, sunrise, I was expecting to be super freaked out by being there in the dark by myself. But it was actually the evening walk back after sunset that was weird because I think, like, sunrise, everything's still asleep. You know, it's the deep of the night. Whereas sunset, things are still making noises because they haven't quite gone to sleep yet. And <laughs> it wasn't pitch black walking along and I could hear like little crickets and little rustling in the bushes and I was like oh I can I'm trying not to freak myself out here yeah. um, I've got it I've got this I've got, I've got this. it I've got it yeah and then I went back again the following morning for sunrise so in the space of 24 hours I walked that walk plus a bunch of other stuff I'd done driving around doing some location scouting and I think I came home and worked out I'd pretty much walked the route the, the equivalent of what I'd done on the route burn track over three days I did over like 24 hours going back <laughs> because it's not it's not like it's a hard walk but it is quite up and down you kind yeah. of go around a couple of bays and things so that so that was um so that was mission one and I came home and sent my images off um and I wasn't that stoked on them but I was just like oh maybe one of them will be okay because I didn't really get any clouds so there wasn't that wow factor with you know amazing kind of sort of sky scene sent them off and, and was hoping to get some feedback and then I got an out of office that afternoon and I was like, oh no. So I'd said, I'd said, look, here's some images. If they're not suitable, then I'll do a mission to Taranaki next week. So this was, I think it was like Wednesday, Thursday night, I went down, submitted the images on the Friday, had the weekend. We had family staying, so I was having to, uh, from overseas, so I was having to try and make the most of time with them as well as going off and yeah. doing what I wanted to do. Uh, and then I, and I sort of said, look, if, if, if you think that one of these images is, is good, then I won't make the mission to Taranaki because, you know, that's three hours in the other direction. Didn't get, <laughs> didn't get any feedback. I jumped in the car, drove down to Taranaki. Um, again, I was going to stay at the, the campground, but I went down to Lake Mangamahoe because that was another spot that they'd identified that they really loved oh, the yeah. image from. So I was trying to get a reflection of the, the mountain and the lake with some nice ripples and things. Um, and uh, I'd been messaging a friend on Instagram that night saying, do they lock the gates? And she said, yes, they do. And I've nearly got locked in there a couple of times. Huh. But, they but they usually come around and kick you out. Now, where I was, I wasn't up on the viewpoint. I was right down by the dam, just kind of tucked in beside these trees. And, you know, it got darker and darker and darker. And I was, um, I was just expecting at any point somebody's going to say, right, come on, you're out. And then I didn't, nobody came. And then I saw like, uh, I could see car lights disappearing off into the distance around dusk. And I thought, I wonder if that was the, you know, like the, I don't know, range or whoever <laughs> shuts it up. So anyway, I got back to the car and I drove. This is about two kilometers to get back to the main gate. Sure enough, I was locked in. So I was like, well, that's okay, you know, because there's a toilet here and I'm in the back of my car with my sleeping mat and I had all my yeah. food and stuff with me. And I was like, well, you know, bonus. I don't have to walk as far in the morning. You know, have to, <laughs> you know sorry, just, and, uh, and everyone's like, well, you're not freaked out. And I was like, well, I don't know. You know, there's nobody really to be in there with me. So, um, yeah. yeah, so that was, that was my other little adventure. And then, uh, yeah, I came back and submitted my images. Like and as it turned out, they didn't actually choose either of the images from Cathedral Cove or Taranaki. It was actually an image that I'd shot um, in, a, in a canyon near Rotorua, but it's still made for some pretty cool stories and I had a whale of a time just hanging out by myself doing all this location scouting and, and just trying to get the shot so oh yeah. I love yeah. it, it yeah very cool. I've got a four-wheel drive as well so uh, his name is Hank the Tank mm. um and I've built it out so I can sleep in the back of it so when you say like you know I'm just gonna sleep in the back of my truck I'm just like oh I love it because it's like yeah. it's like part, all part of the adventure of it right like it really turning yeah. up to places and mm -hmm. Um, setting up a little, well, setting up a little camp in my case, but being stuck yeah, in a yeah. location, um, <laughs> yeah. which would not be a shit place to be stuck, let's be honest. No, no. Um, yeah, and that must be half the fun for you of mm. capturing these photos is scouting the locations and um, going off. Have you had any, um, have you had any locations that you've gone thinking they're going to be like amazing and you've got there and you've gone and they're kind of like, what, what? <laughs> um, not from a 
like the actual lo- location itself, I think probably you get you get weather conditions that don't quite turn out how you want, and that can really change your, you know, your uh, appreciation or enjoyment of of an experience. But mm. um, you know, often, I mean, it's not always possible because if you you live in the North Island like I do, and you've gone to do a big mish down south for a few days, then yeah, you can get quite sort of disappointed with your lot in life if you feel like you've got this one opportunity to go somewhere and you can, <laughs> you can never go back but um you can always go back and so a lot of, I've actually there's been a few places where I have literally just kept going back until I've got the shot whether that's yeah. you know two visits or four visits like um around the other side of Mount Taranaki there's a, a lighthouse at Cape Egmont and I oh, started yeah. I, I tried to get a shot there I think it was like I don't know 2014 and yeah, it took me four visits to get a shot with the lighthouse and the mountain clear. So you sometimes, oh, yeah. just, you know, patience pays off, you know, eventually you just, you get the shot if you're prepared to keep going back, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. But also I think sometimes it's about, yeah, you're not getting the shot that you thought you were going to get. But if you get, keep your eyes open and your mind open, then you'll actually probably end up with something that's really quite unusual and different. I know that when I went to Lake Matheson on the West Coast for the f- first time, and that's and hard to get to like it's miles from anywhere yeah um i went and it was pouring i was with a, our family and we were doing a camper van sort of 10 days around the south island and it had been a, it'd been a bucket list dream of mine to get to lake matheson because it's just got this you know perfect you know mount cook and mount um yeah Asman perfectly reflected on a good day and um, <laughs> we, we, yeah we were there for sunset and sunrise and sunset you couldn't see the mountains um, sunrise it poured with rain and we were sitting in the car park just listening to the rain <laughs> on the roof and I was going oh you know this is just not going to happen and then it sort of stopped raining and so we my husband we left the kids in the camper van don't tell anybody but they were fine um and and we did the walk it's like a 35 minute walk around to sort of what they call reflection island and um we as we were walking the we could see like this really weird cloud above and it just started to light up like you wouldn't believe like I don't know how but often rain provides even yeah. better conditions and so we absolutely had to charge like 15 minutes we I think we ran it in five minutes to get <laughs> there in time and um it's still one of, it's still it's it's just one of these unusual it's not the perfect reflections you can't see the whole mountains but there's just these wisps of mist lit up with yeah. these amazing colors and yeah it just turned out to be something amazing that I never would have expected and I probably didn't even appreciate it at the time. I don't think it's only on reflection later that you go back and go, wow, that was actually amazing. And so many people have said to me, oh, it's so different to what you would normally see there. Mm. That's what makes it unique. So yeah, I think having an open mind is pretty important. Yeah, because and it's so interesting because, you know, there's so much of that for adventure stuff and then life that we can get really fixated on this totally. one thing and that it mm. needs to be, look like this because... Yep that's what everyone else is putting out there so we chase mm-hmm. this yep. thing whether that's a photo or a way that we think we should be in ourselves in life and we chase this thing because we've seen an image of it but the reality is is that there's so much beauty and the the uniqueness and the mm. difference of the photo that you got um yep. and the same with life and who we are and stuff like that so um it's just yeah so many parallels to be able to draw into you know, how we adventure and how we mm. see that because, yeah, like, there are all those bucket lists, like, like, my my list is large. <laughs> Let's just, that's why I am such a huge advocate for New Zealand and exploring mm. our own backyard. Um, like, we've, we have got so many beautiful places, but, um, yeah, there's, um, there's so many expectations then placed on those, like, mm. getting those moments, getting those photos, getting that thing, and it's yep. like we've got to enjoy the journey, mm-hmm. that journey and that adventure of getting to yep. there. So yeah, yeah. So because you've done a few photo shoots at um, Taranaki as well, you've done because mm. we just talked about just before we hit the record button, uh, Pōkai Hut. So um, you uh, got the lovely Florida sleep on the time that I you did. went. <laughs> I did. I did. It's called. Did it's you? Called but did you, did you sleep in front of the fire though? remember there being a fire on because it was summer too oh, so I guess okay, it was yeah. supposed yeah, it to be been, quite warm but it, it wouldn't have been running it was howling a gale <laughs> and, I, and I think I think you know schoolboy era we looked at the number of cars that were parked at the bottom and we thought oh, there's not that many cars therefore there won't be that many people not really 
realizing that obviously people have been, had been able to walk from different parts of the mountain yes. to get there. <laughs> so when, when we turned up and there was literally, yeah, kitchen floor, hard kitchen floor only, and none of us had brought sleeping mats. It oh, was, um, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, oh my goodness. We, but, um, um, because we've stayed at Puakai Hut as well. Because it's a, if anyone's what you know, when you're watching this, you can. I think it's a really pretty little. Um, I think it's a really pretty hut to go to. It's really accessible from Taranaki. I think it's a couple of hours up, yeah. up to get to it, and then you can you can stay at the Puakai Hut, and then um, and then another twenty or thirty minutes up, mm. and then a little dip down. You end up at the tarn that's there, and then on a beautiful day, you can see Taranaki, yes. and Taranaki can reflect off the tarn. The day we went, it was just drizzle and it was like tan, end of the tusker, and then just fog. <laughs> We're like, I think there's Mount Taranaki behind there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we didn't, we did, we certainly did not get the, you know, what you hope for, which is that, mm, oh, mm. here's yeah, Mount Taranaki. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was an, it was such an epic adventure. I think the hut's really cute to stay in. What there was, mm. it was off season, so we were the only three uh, that oh, were there. Wow. And yeah. then um, three French guys turned up and they'd walked from another hut and they were all underprepared. Like oh. we were just rolling our eyes at them. <laughs> they would have gone into hypothermia. We had the fire going and um, they had like one rain jacket between the three of them, one sleeping bag between the three of them. They didn't have a can opener to open their tin of oh my gosh. final tin of baked beans. They'd done the circuit. Yeah. And we were just like, and they were in jeans, you know, and we were just like, if we weren't here, they couldn't have got the fire started. Mm. It's just like, it was a disaster waiting to happen. But um, <laughs> yeah, it just makes me really grateful that, you know, we, yeah, that we were there. So, but I absolutely love that hut and the view from that deck in the morning mm -hmm. is Stunning. Like, yeah, you've got the yeah. whole of the region laid out before you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's such mm. a beautiful hut. So um, tell us about the time that you went there. All the, all <laughs> the two times. Sleeping on the, the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the first time, well, we were obviously trying to get that shot that you've just described. Um, <laughs> and we, I think we left at like 10 p.m. on a Friday night and did the hike up and got there at midnight. And obviously, once you're up there and there's no beds, you're not, what are you going to do? You're not going to walk, turn around and walk back down again. So we just sucked it up and, and slept on the floor. And um, when we got up in the morning, um, the wind had calmed down because it was howling a gale. Um, mm. Went up to the sort of the, the, the tip of the, uh, the highest point before you go down to the tarn. And there was this big inversion cloud layer between the Puakau Range and Mount Taranaki. So we didn't end up going down to the tarn because there would have been no point. We'd have been like you were with the, the mist and everything else. <laughs> yeah. But we did, however, find some little kind of, I guess, almost puddles, which could almost be described as tarns. You couldn't really get a reflection in them, but you could kind of, um, you know, you got the sun sort of rising above the inversion cloud. Mm. We're still, you know, we still looked pretty cool. And so, um, but you know, it was one of those, okay, try again next time. And so pretty much a year to the day later, I went back with my friend and pretty much the same experience. Um, we did, however, have sleeping mat and tent and everything with us this time. So we were a little bit more prepared in case there wasn't anywhere in the hut. But um, that next morning when we, we uh, were at the tarn, just the stillest, craziest still conditions because it's, I mean, it's pretty exposed up there. So yeah, yeah, it was super going. windy when we were up there. Mm. Um, but yeah, there was just this little um, kind of scarf of cloud that sat just below the peak, just enough to give it a really kind of unique look. It's almost yeah. like it was, yeah, it was wearing a scarf. And um, oh. yeah, it's still one of my favorite images today. Like my whole family comes from Taranaki, so oh, both sides yeah. of my family. And I was really, really close to my mum's mum. And I'm the old, I was the oldest grandchild on that side. And so Taranaki's always held a massively special mm. place in my heart. Even though I've never lived there, it actually yeah. sometimes feels more like home than anywhere else in New Zealand. There, so. there is something about Taranaki. When I, uh, when I at 40, a couple of years ago, sold two thirds of my life and packed the rest away and traveled New Zealand for five months, staying in my truck and, and being a real tourist in my country, I was considering where I wanted to move to in New Zealand. And in my mind, I initially had Nelson because I'd mm. been there a couple of times. I had some key drivers. I wanted to be able to go out my house on my bike and be able to ride to mountain bike trails. So Nelson, yep. sick. Yep. Um, and Christchurch was sort of on the radar. But when I went to Taranaki, there was just something about it. And I stayed mm. there for like, actually stayed there for almost a week, which out of, you know, traveling around mm. is quite a long time to stay somewhere. 
but I just there was there was just something that was really beautiful about being there. We did the Paul Cry Hut. I yeah. surfed um, in the West Coast, which was that was an experience. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> um, which I'm a West Coast surf. Like when I surfed, I surfed the West Coast, but that was just a whole different kettle of fish. Mm. Um, it was just something there. Mountain bike. They've got a cool little mountain bike park there, which is actually it's small, but it's really fun to play around on. And I don't know what it was, but Taranaki. There was just something mm. really there's a lot to pull you in there so yeah um, and it's interesting because yeah. it is so hard it's so hard to get to it's on such out on such a limb mm. compared to the rest of the country that you really nobody goes to Taranaki by accident you know? yeah like, yeah yeah you don't drive <laughs> oh, I'm just driving through Taranaki I'll just go check out that and what yeah, it's like yeah. you're but going think, to Taranaki I think you'll find that most people who have lived there or, 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 or have, you know they might live overseas now there, there's when I post images of Taranaki, that's always the one that gets the most people just going, oh, home, you know, like it just, yeah. people just have such a strong connection with the place. It's amazing. Yeah. I love, yeah, that place. I can't wait to get back and go and visit it again. I really want to do, um, actually climb Mount Taranaki. So mm. it's, it's a hard another one. On. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And mm. conditions now that I'm living mm. in the South Island, it's not somewhere I can, just pop mm. pop too. I mean, even yeah. living in Auckland, it's still a drive, but you can probably try and put a window of time in there to, yes. to be able to do it. So this, now I'm in the South Island, it's a little bit harder to come back and do it. Mm. So I sort of need to plan to be there for a week, which is a little, was doable with how, yeah. how, I, how I am. But yeah, oh, I love that place. Um, oh, that's amazing. So full circle back. So mm. uh, the whole point of what we were talking about with that, was getting your photos for your um, for the shoot for your um, Sony stuff. So I was like, yeah. we went on a way different tangent, but that's it's the okay. Whole, whole point of the conversation. So um, yeah, so again, just congratulations on that achievement. I think that's mm. something to really be celebrated. Like that's uh, that's that's phenomenal. Um, so with adventure, like for you, what, like adventure means a whole lot of different stuff to a whole lot of different people. What does mm. adventure mean to you? Like when you say the word adventure, is it climbing big peaks? Is it exploring? What does it, what does it mean for you? For me, I think it's just about, um, and it doesn't even have to be going somewhere you haven't been before because often people put adventure and it's only an adventure if it's somewhere you haven't been before. Um, mm. Okay. Whereas, yeah, interesting. Yeah. I was, I think it, I mean, you know, for me, you know, if I was to go and do that hike up to the Pukai Tan again, to me, that would be another adventure because it would be a different mm. set of circumstances. It might be with a different group of people. It might be at a different time of the year. Um, and I think that's why I was talking before about even if I don't get the shot I want when I go out somewhere, mm. I'm, I very, I can't really think of any time, particularly if it's an overnight or if I've been on like a five day trip down south, that I've come away going, well, that was a waste of time because the memories, you know, the memories you make from those times, regardless of whether it's, you know, finding a possum in the toilet at Moat Lake and locking yourself <laughs> in with it. But, you know, like that's one of my enduring, that's one of my enduring memories of my first ever camper van trip with my friend that I do a lot of these photography adventures. Oh, I with. love that lake too. That's such a beautiful um, lake. But yeah, it was oh my gosh. just, yeah. And so that, for that trip, all I can think about is possums because not only did I lock myself in the toilet with one, but we, <laughs> We did a, a sunset hike into Hooker Lake at Mount Cook and coming yeah. back, oh, we must have seen a hundred possums on the track ah. and they were just constantly like jumping out of us and stuff. And so oh, I just keep thinking about that trip as the possum trip, you know, and then, you know, and then, you know, so, so everything, I think, um, anything that basically makes you come back and be able to talk about it in a way that's funny or that, you know, you've, you've kind of challenged yourself to do something different. I mean, Last August, when I went down with these um, the same friend and another a friend, they'd both been to Lake. Have you been done the Lake Marion walk in Fiordland? No, I haven't. Mm, I don't no. know how long it's going to be before it's back up and running because yeah, the yeah, away in the flood. But so last August we um, were on a five day trip and we started in the Catlins um, the day before and we decided we were going to mish all the way to Milford Sound and they'd had a lot of snow that week and so it was touch and go whether we could get in or not and. Um, yeah, we drove in and, and got in and that was fine. And then we went to get out the next, well, and had an amazing sunrise actually down at the uh, foreshore there with this beautiful mist and snow on Mike's Peak. And we were, had it in our heads that we were going to go do this walk at Lake Marion. And 
uh, unknown to us, even though it, we had heavy rain the, that night, I think the heavy rain had fallen further up near home, a tunnel of snow. So we packed up the camper van and went to leave and we got to the chasm, which is sort of, it's only 10 minutes from where you, where you kind of leave the, the camper van park there. And the road was closed and we had not been paying any attention because if, if we'd looked when we got back to the, the camper van park, there was actually a big sign that said road closed. So anyway, we went back and we, <laughs> I'm we so tried excited to get, to get on your adventure. I know, right? <laughs> we tried to get some advice as to how long it was going to be. And they kept saying, oh, you know, it's only going to be half of there. It'll only be an hour. So we went back and parked up on the queue at the chasm four hours later. Oh. Yeah. So our <laughs> little, like, daytime hike to Lake Marion um, turned into, uh, we're leaving at about two. We've got three hours of daylight left. Should we still be doing, you know? And, <laughs> I was pretty, I must admit, I was, I was on the, I was on the verge of like, let's not do this because yeah. we are going to be walking back in the dark. We don't like really know what the conditions are like. Luckily for me, both of the others had been before, albeit not yeah. in winter, but so they kind of knew what to expect. But as we were doing the walk in, um, I know because I had a really, I, when I did the root burn beginning of last year, I had a real dodgy knee. And so I've always yeah. been quite, um, Oh, sorry, my cat is trying to jump up on me. Ah, you're um, right. We always have visitors. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Oh, he's doing it again. Come on, if you're going to come up, come, come on. Up. Come on, up. Just, we just have, don't scratch. We just have cats scratch. and kids always turning up. <laughs> yeah, this is the cat. Hello, fur baby. Is right. that a mancoon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's 17, so he's doing pretty pretty good. Now. It's huge. Mancoons yeah. are massive. Yeah. I've got a friend with a mancoon. <laughs> I think he's a I think he's a um what do you call it? A, a gypsy no, you know. What do you uh, I don't know how he became a mancoon because his mum was a farm cat in Shannon outside of Palmy, but his dad must have been somehow. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we were on this walk and I was I actually was pretty grumpy. I'll I'll be I'll just, you know, no <laughs> whole I was super grumpy on the way in because it's actually a pretty tough hike. And yeah. all I was envisaging was I'm not very good on downhill. I have to really take it quite slowly yeah. and carefully. Had walking poles as well. And I was just going, okay, this is a really freaking hard walk. And I have to do this through mud and slush because it was quite snowy up near the top. We had to basically hike through snow, maybe the last, I don't know, almost a kilometer or you know 500 meters and so I was just envisaging coming back in the dark and being like I was slow going up so how are we going to do it coming back and <laughs> when we when we got to the lake um I pretty much said that's it I'm going back because I know what I knew, <laughs> I knew what I had to come and I was just like I'm gonna be here for hours trying to get myself back out of this and they convinced me out of it because they're like we don't want you to go by yourself you need to wait you know we want to stay we want to do sunset and um, it turned into this most oh, incredible sunset with this like wispy high cloud that could just kind of lit up and the, the lake was completely still. There were avalanches wow. falling. There was kias flying around. Oh. And, um, and when we walked back out, um, we were all quite slow because we just had to take it really carefully because there's only, yeah. only our orange markers to get out as well. So it's not like yeah. you're following a super established track. Yeah. It's just this one part where you basically have to climb down a cliff using tree roots. And that was the bit that I was most nervous about. But yeah. once I got through that, I was fine. And um, yeah, so I think we got back at, so we'd left at like two and I think we got back at about eight and walked the whole way in the dark coming back. Wow. But it was just like, for me, that was kind of like the piece de resistance of that trip. And regardless of the fact that I went into the walk going, I'm not enjoying this. I'm really not sure why I'm doing it. Came out of it going, oh, I did it. And, you know, I conquered I conquered my fear of yeah. going downhill in the dark and yeah it was good it was good to have persevered I think I'm, I'm glad they convinced me because I think left to my own devices I may have made a different decision but sometimes you need those people to mm. to tell you that you are capable if you don't always have the confidence in yourself you know yeah it's so funny and um, Sarah and I just talked about that on our interview she was just like we can sometimes doubt our capability for mm. you know what we can do when we go out there and having the right girlfriends sister yes. sisterhood totally. and all that sort of stuff be you know adventure besties yeah. having the right people to go and do those adventures with I think can truly make can truly make an adventure and that's mm. for me that's why I love like I love adventuring full stop with anybody like anyone who wants to go let's go as long as you've got a good yeah. attitude you know like a, a yeah. positive attitude and I understand we all go through challenges and get grumpy and stuff but um you can still be an optimistic person but it's like mm. 
going with the right people on those kinds of trips can really help to 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 get you to see what you're really capable of and mm. stretch and kind of totally. do yeah do the stuff that you're like I don't know that I can or I'm too afraid to do that but mm. doing going out with women as well I always find that it's a really different um it's a whole different space like there's a little bit more nurturing a little bit more um you know a little bit more care you know and sometimes it's great going with the guys because they'll be very like you're doing it you're like yes I am okay (laughs) um (laughs) but you get the chance to kind of like just like process Mm. I think a little bit more when you go out with out with women there's a sense of being able to maybe be a little bit more vulnerable Mm. um and yeah and that sort of stuff so yeah I, I think going on adventures with women just makes such a for me makes it a massive difference yeah, I, I, feel, I feel very fortunate that I've got this one photography friend that I, because we've, we're quite we're quite similar in what we like to shoot. We mm. both have similar family setups where we both have two boys. We have husbands who are super understanding of all of the adventures yes. we want to go on. And so <laughs> we want to go off together and, and, and have all these, you know, like we've been on multiple trips together. And I think nice. having somebody who's got that sort of same outlook on life, Mm. um you know loves the same things you do man it just yeah. makes it so much more uh, enjoyable because you just know that regardless of whether you get an amazing shot on a spot you've actually just enjoyed the hangout the chats yes the, you know the funny stories you know the shared the shared hiccups and things and um yeah yeah for me that's just yeah it's the coolest part of adventuring is just having those yeah. I mean I do I do quite enjoy this I've, you know the solo adventures I've done recently I've quite enjoyed because it's just a bit of time where you don't often get that time to yourself yeah um, especially being a know. mum and a business mm-hmm. owner and all mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. yeah so that, that was really cool and I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I would um mm. but yeah I do lo- I do love the, the, the shared sharing adventures with others I think is also for me it's about being able to come back and have those memories and those stories to tell and to would say remember when yeah yeah I love it like I've got a handful of um I call them my adventure besties because it's like you know you know you're gonna they're gonna say yes if they, they're available they're gonna say yes and they're gonna go on that adventure with you and then you know that you're just gonna talk about whatever is going on in your lives and you're just gonna get a yeah. chance to almost sometimes debrief about life and um you know they'll listen and they'll if you want advice they'll give it to you and but it's in a way that it's like because you're out in the world you know out in nature just kind of tramping along and stuff like that it um it never feels like it's like a you're trying to solve the problems of the world it's just like Mm -hmm. you just seem to have that space to be able to kind Mm of percolate and perturbate on kind of things and and sort of sound it out and and when you've got great adventure besties to go with Mm -hmm. then you know, they're um, lend an ear and, and, and advice and then you get to have the adventure along the way and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So, yeah, just that that whole thing, I, it's, mm. yeah, it's just addictive. <laughs> it totally is. And I think, like you were just saying about that time to sort of percolate and stuff, I think often um, when, like, when you go on those adventures, you actually take yourself out of, you take yourself out of the daily grind and out of the moment and out of the worries and things. And I think often I've found just having that break away for a few days, not only does it, oh, I come back absolutely naked and smashed like I need a holiday from my adventure, but but I never feel like that, you know, like I never come back and go, oh, I wish I, you know, I wish I, had, wish I hadn't done that. I actually, I love the fact that I come back like exhausted and so happy, but also I think, you know, taking yourself out of whatever, oh, you're going to decapitate yourself, Kat. Um <laughs> Yeah, when you take yourself out of the the worries and of the moment, I think you, I think there's just that extra perspective that you can get that you can't get when you're at home and you're in mm. different things, you know. And like I often, mm. you know, there's been things that I've been dealing with going away into a, in a trip like that. Whereas, and it's almost like you come back and you've got better ideas about how you're going to cope with it, or you've mm. you've decided it's actually not such a big deal after all, or you've yeah, you know, I don't know. It just I feel like that time away actually you end up sometimes solving the problems of the world without really yep. not your intention for going but you mm. come back and that's a byproduct you know a hundred percent yeah I think it's that ability to have that step away from the the daily dailiness of mm. busyness and routine of life and more often than not you're saying going somewhere new but even if you're going down the same to a to walk a same track or something like that no two days is ever the same because of the seasons and the weather and all of that sort of stuff so um yeah we t- I was talking to Sarah about it. it was like you just you can't be anywhere except present to that mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. so and in that presence you get reconnected and in that reconnecting then it's like then you just get this fresh perspective and a new take on it and 
yeah and what we were probably worrying about before just kind of washes away and you realize that in the scheme of things it's it's not as big as you're making it out to be or mm. just gives you that i think that space to be able to process and perturbate and percolate and kind of mm. all of that sort of stuff so mother nature she's amazing she gives us so much stuff that um yeah i think it's a little bit hidden and amongst all our adventuring so um mm. i'm super grateful that um that we have that and and on our own doorstep as well i mean that's that's our joint passion really is that it's like, you know, for me, I've traveled overseas. I've run a few adventures overseas. And I remember at a time I was doing some surf trips over in Bali and I um, considered moving there. The first time I went there, I was like, this is like, I can live like a queen here in Bali. Yeah, yeah. I can do this and that. Da, da, da. And then I remember landing back in New Zealand. The first place I went to was Murawai Beach because I was living out that way. And I had, and it was one of those, beautiful days it was clear it was windy but it was sunny and I put my feet in the ocean and I just remember going I will like why why would I leave this country I was yeah. like no I was like mm. there is so much to see around New Zealand that you know I I will never scratch the surface in my lifetime of the places to explore mm. and I have every intention of trying to get to as many places as I can and seeing as much of this beautiful country as possible. So, yeah, we are so lucky. And mm. I think, um, I think, uh, I don't know, like I think this, the current situation, I hope that with the fact that the, I think travel is going to be a little bit restricted for a while, I feel like there's mm. so many opportunities for Kiwis to reconnect with their own country. If, if they so choose, I mean, there'll, there'll be people who are inev inevitably maybe don't have the money to travel anymore, but um, mm. Look, you don't have to travel far. You don't. Mm. Have, you know, you don't have to go. I mean, I know. Obviously, we want to be spending some money in, in the domestic tourism area, but like, you know, just just go for that one hour hike that you've always planned to do. That's only half an hour down the road. Just do it. You know, just get out and experience nature. Because I feel like um, one of the conversations I've been having with my photography friends is um, you have the like I said, you have those expectations, and then when they're not met, sometimes you can come back and get a bit like oh you know I didn't I didn't get the, the shot I wanted mm. and can be a, sometimes be a little bit ungrateful about the places you are because you, you didn't really get what you wanted I feel like we're all going to be a lot more grateful about just being able to travel when all this is over so yeah that can't be a bad thing like rather than going oh you know we did our five day trip and we maybe only got 10 bangers you know actually yeah. going well we just we were allowed to, we were able to travel for five days around New Zealand how cool was yeah. that yeah you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. The perspective. perspective yeah <laughs> snap <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think everyone's going to come out of um this whole lockdown with a different perspective and a new appreciation and I really hope that um through this the domestic market will mm. that will really thrive and that we will mm. Can re really consider you know checking out what we've got in our own backyards be it mm. close or over in north island south island and all that sort yeah. of stuff so so on that what would be three um three places that you would like once the lockdown's over what would be three places you would say all right adventure girls of why she adventures you must put these on your list they are my favourite three places to go. What would be your top three? Well, I don't want to talk about Cathedral Cove and Taranaki again because I feel like I've already done them to death. So let's let's choose some others, shall we? Oh, I love it. All right. Mm, okay, because I would got my pen I would, and paper to write them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would <laughs> I would totally put Cathedral Cove and Taranaki or Coromandel anyway because there's actually yep. some other beautiful spots around mm. there. So those those are kind of a given. But we'll, we'll pick some some new ones. I would say the Catlins was probably one of New Zealand's ah. most underrated a i think because it's so blooming far away to get to but <laughs> um there i mean in being a waterfall queen i i guess i'm a little bit biased but there are <laughs> like four amazing waterfalls within probably an hour's drive of each wow. other and then you've also got nugget point which is where um the lighthouse is and seeing a sunrise from there is like just it's like you're on the end of the world, the edge of the world, oh. watching the sun arise, and you're the only person, you know, in the whole entire universe. That's pretty cool. I love that. And also, um, this last trip I did in February, I um, went to Waipapa Point, which is a lighthouse in the same region. So you've kind of got, kind of got in the cargo at the bottom. You've got Waipapa, you've got all these waterfalls, and then Nugget Point's kind of up around the corner. 
Um, and that was a, that's such a beautiful spot. And um, I think if you can catch a Milky Way or an Aurora there, it would be just phenomenal because it's, it points directly south. There's nothing, you know, you just straight wow. up. Um, I was there for sunrise and I was by myself. And again, I just had a, an amazing um, experience there. But I think being there at a time when you can kind of do the night shots as well would be pretty awesome. So the Catlins for me is, yeah, untapped beauty, just you know, and not many people, I mean, I think if you're into waterfalls, you'd probably want to go there anyway, yeah. because it's got so many, but um, yeah, it's just a stunning, stunning area, and just so, so few cars and people in there, just, I just, I just love that, that part of it, um, I think that sounds beautiful. Northland would be one of my other picks, so, oh yes, yeah, I did a trip there last, this time last year, actually, in April with the family, we did eight days in the camper van, and um, oh man, you I think it was when I realized that there was as much north of Auckland from Auckland to Cape Ring, it was basically the same distance as Auckland to Wellington. I was like, this place is huge. Like there was so <laughs> much up here. And I mean, we, as I said, in eight days, I literally scratched the surface of all of the things that you yeah. could do. It would have been like just a recce. Like. <laughs> oh, totally. It was totally a recce. I'd have to go back and spend like, and we, we deliberately didn't go to places like Pai here in the Bay of Islands because I'd been there before, but yep. um, things like climbing up St. Paul's Rock, which is on the Whangaroa Harbour, um, that's pretty awesome. You get this, this amazing view of kind of like all these little inlets going out to sea. Um, Matari Bay was another place that was awesome. So you can climb up on the top of a hill and you just get, yeah, kind of like 360 degree views of, of the, uh, the coastline up there. Um, the sand dunes, the boy, have you done boarding at Tapaki? Yeah, we've done. I used to do a um, <laughs> I used to do a seven day surf trip up to um, Ninety Mile Beach, so because um, it's it's so accessible up that way. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah The sandboarding. I wish we'd had more time. We only had about an hour and a half to do it, and honestly, I reckon apart from the fact you get so naked climbing the bloody sand dunes. Yes. <laughs> If you if you could be like if you could somehow have someone like pull you up somehow so you didn't have to keep like trudging up the hill, I reckon I could have done it all day. It's just so it's much fun. Amazing so, fun, isn't it? You're just uh, clinging on for dear life to the yeah. front of the board, hoping yeah. you don't like either catch an edge or spin round or something like that. But oh, that was yeah. that's a hoot. That's so much yeah. fun. And I think the fact that we have a desert, like an actual desert in New Zealand, like when, when I was <laughs> posting pictures from there, people like. This place is not in New Zealand, like it totally, <laughs> but like, it's not that well known. I mean, apart from the sandboarding, it's not that well known. Yeah. Um, what else did I love up that way? Oh, also, um, I just, I loved Whangarei Falls. Like, it's kind of weird that you would, there would be a waterfall right in the middle of the city. And oh. yeah, it's, it's strange because there's not many other places you can go visit a waterfall smack bang in the middle of a township like that, but it's just a beautiful amphitheater lovely sort of bush wow. and yeah that's really cool so I yeah Northland would be another another top spot and then maybe my last one um just because I think it's on top of mind because I've just been writing a blog about light light six epic lighthouses to visit in New Zealand and um Castle Point is another place which I think is pretty epic um so it's on it's sort of about an hour's drive from Masterton out on the east coast yep. um and I've been a couple of times and we went, I think it would have been like about a year and a half ago. And the first time we went, we didn't climb Castle Rock, but this time we did. And that's a hell of a steep. I mean, it's only like a 20 minute like mesh up the hill. Yep. But when do you feel like you, you've conquered something? Because it's <laughs> and you're on such an edge of a cliff that you kind of get to the cliff and go, yeah, I did this. Yeah. Um, and you've got this I did it. Yeah, yeah. And you've got this a view over the kind of like the, the whole sort of um, bay with the, the lighthouse sort of jutting out there. And I think, I think that's somewhere else that's super unique to New Zealand. Like I just, yeah. there's not many places that kind of look like that. And I think the fact that it is pretty hard to get to makes it somewhere that you really have to decide to go, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Those would be my three picks, I think. Oh, they sound amazing. I love it. Every time I get on a call with, um, do one of these conversations, I'm like, my list just literally keeps getting longer. And it's mm. like, now that I'm in the South Island, I'm like, oh, how can I plan a trip back up to the North Island? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I'm... Well, the, Catlins are, the Catlins are on your doorstep, kind yes, of. Just, just a I, few hours I've, drive south. Yeah, and I've done, um, I've done Stewart Island and I've gone to mm. Bluff and I had heaps of people say, did you go to the Catlins? And I was like... No, <laughs> um, I had to have to do a little bit of a mission back. I had a had a girlfriend fly from Auckland. She needed to fly out of Invercargill. Uh, no, she was flying out of Dunedin 
because the Gutsy Girls Adventure film tour was on. So like, we just had our timing. We did, went over, did Stewart Island, and then we had to like pretty much boost it up to Dunedin so that she could catch her flight out. I could go and um, go watch the Gutsy Girls Adventure film tour. So the Catlins got skipped, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, but it on the list. You, I was going to say, think, it sounds um, like it's going on the list. Yeah, the, the one pl I, there's a couple of places I didn't get to in the Catlins. One was the Cathedral Cave, so you, it, you can go and walk out there at low tide. Um, so that's somewhere I still haven't been. Um, and is there one more waterfall I haven't visited? Which, you know, is quite surprising given how much I suffer <laughs> I am for them. But um, yeah, there's, there's definitely a couple of other spots in there that I would, you know, would go back to in a heartbeat. But yeah, it's just... I don't know, there's just something about that place. It's so far from anywhere and just such mm. untouched beauty. And okay, it doesn't have the majestic peaks of the Southern Alps or, you know, doesn't have... It's always about that though, right? No, it totally isn't. So, yeah, there is... This, there's Actually, there is one funny, um, as you're driving along, I think it's on the main road, there's this one little township called Niagara, of all places. <laughs> and there's, there's this little signpost that says Niagara Falls. And um, it's this stream that's got a drop of about this big, and that's <laughs> Niagara Falls. So <laughs> somebody's attempted humour back in the day when they named this little town or settlement Niagara, and they yeah. like did a mini Niagara Falls. Only, only Kiwis, I think, would have that kind of humour. Oh, that's awesome! I love it. Putting Niagara Falls in New Zealand on the sh on the list, then. <laughs> totally. <laughs> So to wrap this up then, I would love to know um, what's one message that you have for all the women out there who want to have some more fun and adventure in their lives, but they're like afraid of maybe taking that step to go out and do it? Uh, I, think you've, I think I've sort of proven by some of the adventures that I've described that you don't always have to be 100% confident. I think you just have to take the next step and the next step and the next step that's in front of you. And um, You'll, you will surprise yourself at what you're capable mm. of. Like, um, we didn't end up talking about this, but I did the root burn track beginning of last yes. year and I didn't do the right training for it. And so after day one of, we did it the opposite way. So we kind of went from the Fjordland end mm -hmm. and after climbing up to uh, Key Summit and then doing the big downhill and then up and down to Lake Mackenzie, my knee was completely screwed. And I got to the, the hut at the end of that first day and I was just like, I've got another 20 Ks. I actually don't know how I'm going to do this because I was in such pain. And my husband was like, well, I'm not helicoptering you out. So you're just going to have to suck it up. <laughs> but, I mean, I knew that, but I'm not sure it was that helpful telling me. Um, so, you know, this like a good time to sugarcoat stuff. <laughs> yeah, and say, that's fine. I'll piggyback you if I need to. But, you know, we both were carrying heavy packs. So, um, <laughs> But you know what, like I, you know, I, it was literally just one step in front of the other. You know, I mm. think I, I think there was 70,000 steps in total I did on my step counter and, you know, 50,000 of those hurt like buggery. Um, but, you know, you're actually capable of more than you think you are. And so I think not, not going in with a limiting belief that you can't do something rather than going, I'm not sure if I can, but I'm going to give it a go anyway, because what's the worst that can happen, right? You know, and I think most of the time, because we are capable of more than we think we are, you will surprise yourself and you will actually come out, you know, having gone, shit, yeah, I just did something that I didn't think I was capable of. And yeah, I think the more you do that, the more your confidence grows. And then, you know what, the world's your oyster. Ah, preach it, sister. That is the truth right there. Thank you so much, Megan. It's been a real pleasure. I love, I love this because it's like I come in, you know, we've only met once <laughs> actually yeah. in person. We did have a wine and a cider together, mm, but we did. met once. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, I've been following your photography, which I think is stunning and beautiful. And then, you know, I always ask anyone who I'm interviewing to send some, just some basic information through so we can have some talking points. But then what actually like unfolds from all those talking points is so much more and that's the real depth and breadth of a person and it's just been a real pleasure to get to know you um, in a way that's um, been really fantastic. Like I, I love your philosophy on life and um, that advice for women out there is pretty much bang on and what why she adventure stands for is, you know, we're all about getting, you know, inspiring women to get out and do more cool shit in New Zealand. Um, and yeah, we don't have to be conquering big mountains in order to be doing that. It's just challenging ourselves, trusting ourselves and getting out there and just giving shit a go. So yeah. 
that's totally. been a pleasure. So you've written some really cool blogs, it sounds like. If people want to get in touch, check out your photography, find out those blogs, because I'm already like gagging to know about the waterfalls because I will love a good destination hike. So yeah. I like to have a peak to get to or a waterfall to get to that kind of rounds out an adventure for me. So um, if they want to get in touch, um, what's the best um, website that they can reach you on? Um, so yeah, just my on my um, Megan Maloney Photography website, so it's just meganmaloneyphotography.co.nz. Um, you also can find me on Instagram, again, just under forward slash Megan Maloney Photography. Um, I don't, I want to do more blogs, but hey, finding the time sometimes is just a bit of a mesh. But yeah, as I said, I made, a, I made an effort over the weekend to write one about epic lighthouses that you can visit. Um, and I've got, as I said, I've got a waterfall series of pretty much like waterfalls in Northland, you know, around Coromandel, Rotorua, Catlins, um, Fiordland. So I've kind of put them into different regions and kind of awesome. rated them all, how long it takes to get there, how good the photography opportunities are, what the overall experience is like, just because I think people often want to know before they go, you know, like, what am I up for? You know? Yep. Oh, oh yeah. well, once you have those all done, we're obviously real happy to share them out mm. to our ladies because I'm already gagging to get my hands on them. So I'm sure that there's others out there as yeah. well. So sure. um, we'll, we'll put with this video the link to um, be able to get in touch with, um, with Megan for any of that sort of stuff. And hopefully soon her workshops will be back up and running. So if you're an aspiring photographer, um, then um, you can jump on any of uh, Megan's workshops as well. So it has been an absolute pleasure so yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so here's to getting more ladies out doing some cool shit absolutely go go get it girls <laughs> awesome thanks megan all right take care hun. <laughs>